All right, in this video, we're going to be looking at some problems that can occur with the immune system. Um, we have talked about innate defenses and we've talked about adaptive defenses. And what the focus of this one is going to be is more along the lines of there are what when those systems go wrong, maybe they're a little overactive or underactive, and what can occur from that. So the first thing we're going to look at is something called immunodeficiency. The immunodeficiency is what it says. It is a deficiency in the immune system. Typically, uh, there's some sort of functional impairment in the immune system. It could be an incomplete impairment, or it could be a part of the immune system that doesn't work fun work properly. This can be congenital, meaning that you're born with it, or it can be an acquired thing, something that you get as a result of some th sort of other thing going on in your life. And there are a couple of examples of this that I'll mention. The first one is called severe combined immunodeficiency or SCID. And this is a genetic defect with a deficit in B cells and T cells. And, or it could be B cells or T cells, depending on the specific issue. Um, and basically if you don't have those things, your immune system is not able to fight infection makes sense. You know, you think of the importance of those cells. If you don't have, if you have a low B cell count or a low T cell count, your immune system is going to be compromised. You've probably heard of Hodgkin's disease as well. It is an acquired immunodeficiency. And basically what happens is, is it causes cancer in the B cells. And if there's cancer in the B cells, think about your B cells going through your lymph nodes, going through your blood system. Basically, it depresses those lymph node cells um, and it causes an immunodeficiency, which is not good. And it's uh, something that can spread to other parts of the body as well. And then on the right, you have a picture of the human immunodeficiency virus or HIV. And HIV leads directly to acquired immune deficiency syndrome or AIDS. And basically what happens with HIV is that it directly attacks helper T cells. And we talked about the importance of helper T cells in the last video. If they go away, the whole immune system is, is threatened. And so what ends up happening with an individual infected by HIV is they acquire some sort of sickness that is normally easy for a healthy person to fight off, but because of the uh, depression of the immune system, they're unable to fight it off. Next are autoimmune diseases, and autoimmune diseases are a disease that results when the immune system basically loses the ability to distinguish self from non-self, or a easier way to think about it is when the immune system attacks itself. Remember we talked about those proteins that your body puts out, those MHC1s, and it says, okay, this is me. I recognize me. So imagine a situation in which you produce antibodies and cytotoxic T cells that would go out and destroy your own body tissues. For some reason, the body triggers a response that says, you know, maybe your joints or something like that are bad and so it will go out and then attack those things the example here on the right is a picture of rheumatoid arthritis which is an immune response against one's own joint tissues which is not good so they basically think of the immune the joints being broken down over time there's an inflammatory response associated with that and so people who have rheumatoid arthritis have swollen joints for long periods of time uh, multiple sclerosis, this is an immuno, immune response against your own myelin sheath, and so it can affect the brain and other parts, and eventually breaks down those nerves, the nerves stop working or die, and so it is a progressive type disorder. Uh, Graves disease is another one, it's called, it causes hyperthyroidism, where your thyroid works over time. Uh, no longer able to control itself. Type 1 diabetes is another one where uh, there's an autoimmune response against pancreatic cells and the body decides that those should no longer be there. So again, this is not um, a normal thing. This is when the body goes, the immune system is working. It's just working against the wrong things. It's like um, attacking itself, which is not good. Most treatment for autoimmune diseases uh, has to do with suppressing the entire immune system. 
Uh, so that's not a good thing because then it can leave you vulnerable to other things. Uh, typically anti-inflammatory drugs as well, because the member of the immune system triggers that inflammatory response as, as coupling to help the body heal. But if it's, if it's all over the place, it's not a good thing. And so typically uh, doctors will describe things or prescribe things like steroids and those steroids work and are the kind of the anti-inflammatory uh, and they will go out and deal with those. Um, and they can also d prescribe things that will block uh, cytokine action, like blocking interleukin-1 or interleukin-2. If you can block those things, then it stops the immune system from working. Obviously, that's not a good thing. You want those systems to be in place because they're in place to help. But if, it's the, if, it's, if it increases quality of life, it's a good thing. And looking at this thing called hypersensitivities, I uh, think of the word hyper more than sensitive. So this is when you're more sensitive than you should be. The immune response is basically uh, perceived against a harmless threat and it causes tissue damage uh, that shouldn't happen. There are different types of hypersensitivities um, depending on what they are the, the type of immune response that is initiated against them. So it could be whereas antibodies are released to deal with that, or it could be cytotoxic T cells that are released to deal with that, depending on the response. And both of those are going to have uh, different actions. If you've ever had something like dermat like contact dermatitis, uh, poison ivy examples, uh, exposures are a really good example of this. If you've been exposed to poison ivy, those cells that have that poison ivy on them um, to initiate an immune response against, the body initiates an immune response against them, and it goes out and starts destroying them, which causes you to, you know, have this flare-up or this inflammation all over your body because those T-cells release the chemical, the histamine, and so the best thing to take for this type of hypersensitivity is an antihistamine usually. Now there's also something called an immediate hypersensitivity and we also call this an allergic reaction and usually begins in seconds after contact with the allergen and this antigen, whatever it is, that you know, it could be pollen, it could be whatever it is, causes the allergic reaction just like you would think it does, right? An initial contact with that allergen or allergen is usually asymptomatic. Uh, but it, what happens is, is it sensitizes the person. So you take someone who has a peanut butter allergy. Usually the first time they came in contact with peanut butter, it didn't cause a problem. However, remember the body uh, remembers things. Those B cells, think of the, B, the memory B cells, they remember and they think, okay, next time peanut butter comes, we're going to be ready for it. They've decided that peanut butter is bad for whatever reason. And these particular kinds of antibodies called E antibodies are activated. And what happens is those antigens are those activated E antibodies will bind to mast cells. And if you remember uh, what mast cells do, you can see it. There's these IgE or E antibodies, and they will bind to mast cells. And remember, these AE antibodies were formed specifically uh, against the thing that you came in contact with, be it peanuts or milk or pollen, I guess is what that represents. And it's they're basically waiting. They're saying, okay, next time we come in contact with this thing, we're really going to deal with it. And so you come in contact with peanut butter or pollen or whatever it is again, and those E antibodies that are attached to your mast cells will immediately trigger the release of histamine. And if you think about this in a systemic sense, you know, your whole body has these, we talked about these mast cells being ready. They're kind of patrolling and they're waiting and they're, you know, and you think about them being proliferated throughout your body through the lymphatic system um, and you come in contact with peanut butter, which part of your body is going to have a histamine response against it? The whole thing. It thinks it's doing good. It's an overreaction. And so what ends up happening is the important parts of your body end up swelling up and having this inflammatory response, you know, like your lungs and your blood vessels. And this is why someone who has this kind of reaction can go into something what's called anaphylactic shock, where they aren't breathing and they aren't getting blood the way they do. And so typically the 
the uh, response to this is, and you've all, you all know this because you've been around people who have severe allergies, is that they will give them what's called an EpiPen. And an EpiPen is just norepinephrine, straight adrenaline. And it is an anti-inflammatory. It causes the blood vessels to dilate. It causes the air passageways to dilate because that is a sympath, you know, parasympathetic and sympathetic and immune response or nervous response where you have this fight or flight kind of reaction, right? And so it's temporary. It doesn't last forever. So usually someone who has an allergic response needs to, after their EpiPen, has to go get medical attention to, to further suppress their immune system and to further control that inflammation. And so that's why people who have this sort of thing have to carry around that EpiPen just in case they have some sort of incidental contact because the body will act as if it is under threat by something dangerous when in fact it's just a bee sting or a peanut butter or a pollen. And so that's kind of how allergies work. There's a lot more there, obviously, but that's basically what's going on is the body is convinced that something that is not harmful is very harmful and has this whole response against it. 